So last week, I did a story uh, uh, sharing with you that many of the fans of The View have been expressing their exasperation with Sarah Haynes' behavior on the show. Today, in this broadcast, I want to provide you with specific examples of that behavior that occurred just this week. (laughs) Because as these viewers pointed out, her bad behavior, unfortunately, is increasing from week to week to week. Today's broadcast will be triggering for some who also suffer from the same affliction as Sarah. And thus, it may be difficult to listen to this one, but each of our goal in life should be to have the healthiest relationships that we possibly know how to have, okay? So that means we all, you, me, Sarah, whomever it is, we have to identify our own behaviors in the workplace, in our homes that are destroying our relationships and work on them, even if hearing about them makes us feel bad. Well, hey, hey, y'all, welcome back. It's My View on The View, a community here on YouTube for those who enjoy ABC's The View. We get together and we talk about any and everything surrounding the show. I am so glad that you joined me for a brand new episode today. Now, listen, I want you to hang around until the end because I have four, yes, four tips I want to share with you. So come on in here. Let's discuss this thing going on with Sarah. Come on. So Sarah Haynes, although kind and in my view on the view, a ray of sunshine at our table, she is also very, very passive aggressive. She uses passive aggressive humor, passive aggressive sarcasm, passive aggressive digs with her coworkers in front of and unfortunately behind the camera, specifically toward Joy Behar and Sonny Hostin. You know, all of us know that passive aggressive behavior damages relationships. Uh, It erodes trust and it makes communication with that person very, very difficult. But what is passive aggressive behavior? The bottom line is it is a concealed form of aggression, which can make it difficult to confront when you have to deal with it because the person will very often fall back on, I don't know what you're talking about, or that was just a joke, or hey, don't take it so seriously. So this week, during several discussions where it appears that Sarah Haynes felt slighted, she unfortunately fell back on this destructive and dysfunctional behavior. So, for example, during one discussion this week, they were talking about the first family's dog, you know, at the White House (laughs) having all these multiple biting incidents. It appears that during that conversation, Sarah felt slighted. So later, when it was time for Sonny to speak, Take a listen to the passive aggressive humor on display from Sarah. I have newfound limbs. They bark, they weigh 155 pounds, 150 pounds. They slobber on you and they lick you on your face. Yeah. And then that's it. Except the one that chased the delivery person. Except the one that that chased the (laughs) Uber Eats person. We're not talking about that. Point me. Point me. Yes. And later in the week, they were talking about, you know, the whole controversy surrounding country music singer Jason Aldean. Okay. Now, once again, during that conversation, it appears that Sarah felt slighted by Sonny. So later, when Sonny began to speak, remember that was the day when her mom was in the audience, Sonny's mom, that is, take a listen to the passive aggressive dig coming from Sarah. Because maybe he doesn't consciously realize why a lot of people are not okay I'm, with this song. I'm actually and not you should gonna, really listen I'm, to that. I'm actually not going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I'm pleased that you are and well, you, I'm pleased you, that you, you are. you do agree that he should be allowed to say I, whatever he because wants. Because as a lawyer, when I put my legal hat on, yeah, okay. I don't believe in censorship. Right. However, this man is from Macon, Georgia. My father's from Augusta, Georgia and Macon, Georgia. I both? spent many summers there. Yeah, both. I spent many summers uh-huh. there. And because sometimes Sarah may feel overcorrected by joy, take a listen to this montage. Disorder ...and was released from the Air Force. Yeah, but that's irrelevant the, the, really no, to what he's saying. No, because he left, the, the, he was raised without his dad for years and years and years. So? His dad had, no, but there's some... The phrase is a man of a few words, not a woman of a few words. So when a man wants to talk, it's like very attractive. Yeah, but they're lying. Well, this is a very important part. Yeah. They're lying. I'm I'm speaking to the fact that the women are attracted to these men. 
and that's yeah. why. Does it change well, when you lie? <laughs> well, yeah, of course, then he's a jerk, and you get rid of him. Yes, she does the exact same thing with Joy. However, unlike Sunny, who does not address Sarah's passive-aggressive behavior directly, she simply ignores it, um, Joy takes it <laughs> takes it on head first. And very often that's when we see those collisions between uh, Joy and Sarah. So what is very interesting to me is that when I saw this conversation taking place, uh, like I said, going back, I mean, it's an ongoing conversation that fans have had going back that I've seen uh, three to four months. It possibly uh, was going on longer than that, but that's just when I noticed it. There was a different part of that conversation that I didn't bring up uh, last week. And that is that these people were saying they they feel like that because Sarah displays this passive aggressive behavior uh, to the two of them specifically, doesn't seem to do it with them, um, Whoopi, doesn't seem to do it with uh, Alyssa. Now we know she does it with Anna when she's there as well, um, because she very often may feel like they said slighted by Anna during the conversations. But these people were saying this behavior indicates to them that she doesn't actually like Joy or like uh, Sunny. That's the part that I disagree with, okay? Because all of us know that you can actually on your job be annoyed with folks and you can fall back, you know, into some destructive or dysfunctional behaviors as a means of coping with them, okay? But that doesn't mean you don't like them. You still like them. You're just you're just trying to find a way to cope, okay? I'm not making excuses for Sarah. I'm just saying these Passive aggressiveness is a coping mechanism. Most of us know that. So I disagree with that part. Okay. Now, they also were talking about the fact that, you know, maybe Sonny should be more confrontational. Maybe Joy should as well. But here's what I want to say. I wonder if these people uh, listened to the Behind the Tables podcast that happened last year with Sarah and Abby, because in this conversation, they were all talking about how she doesn't do it to Whoopi. She kisses Whoopi's behind, all that. Take a listen to Sarah and Abby comparing uh, Whoopi and, and, and Joy on the show, basically saying how one is more loving and one is kind of like that aunt that really irritates you. Take a listen. Because she was kind of like my little protector. Yeah. You know, where Joy would <laughs> whisper to me during the commercial break and say, you sure you can't send him back? <laughs> Wait, she'd go to me after when I start. I got pregnant the second time. She goes, you already did this once. Why are you doing it again? Yeah, I was like, Joy, not everyone's an only child. <laughs> but you have to understand, Joy, right? And I think you and I both. I love you. We, don't, we just don't take it all no. so personally or seriously. So it's like, right. you know, you have to understand people for who they are and what yeah. makes them who they are. And so having, we sat in that same seat. So it was always just a funny dynamic. But Whoopi was, was always very caring. Um, which which was really nice for me to have. I feel like I did have someone there that was kind of looking out for me. She, one, is a, is a mama. She'll take care of and mm-hmm. scoop up and always protects, I find. Mm-hmm. I think the, the important thing but is... But she has to know your heart, right? It takes a minute. Oh, she has no. to learn your heart. Yep. And she knows pretty quickly. And then once you're mm-hmm. in, you're in for life. She will always be there for you. Mm-hmm. But one thing I also learned being there is that sometimes when people watch the show, my own parents are conservative and they've met uh, they've met Joy and everyone, but sometimes my my mom, my dad will get really frustrated and he can't watch the show because the politics. Oh, I and know I'm that like, goes. Yep. yeah, and I'm like, Dad, think about it as a family. Like we are all very different, and we are slightly dysfunctional. But the difference with family is you never stop loving, and if you always put love first, wherever that is, you will find a way. It doesn't make us all agree, and it doesn't make us the same. That's how I've always viewed the view family, especially the people at that table. They're like, but. How can you see? I'm like, because politics aren't all we have. We have humanity and we have funny stories and moments and we don't we don't hate each other. Like we actually like each other. And I think that's what I was like. It's like sitting next to a cranky aunt who will turn and say some of her funniest stuff that could never be aired right to you because you're sitting right there. (laughs) Totally. And sometimes they're guests and I'm like, Joy, they can hear you whispering to me. Stop. So for me, as I shared last week, I see the behavior that these folks are talking about. Listen, I'm not going to sit up here and lie. And just because I like Sarah, try to pretend that I haven't seen her being extremely passive aggressive. And, and that, yes, like they said, it has gotten worse. The more she feels slighted, the more she leans back on this, this very terrible behavior. So, yes, I see it. But what I want to share to add some balance to the conversation is we all of us have good things about us and things we need to work on. OK, these ladies are no different, y'all. The longer we watch this show and it's been on for 26 years 
the more readily we're going to be able to identify the great and the not so great about each of these women, just like our coworkers who work with us for a while can identify the great and not so great or our family members. You say, well, I, I'm retired my view on the view. And, uh, I don't live with nobody. So, uh, well, here's what I gotta say. Do you have a pet? Do you have a pet, ma'am? Do you have a pet, sir? Because if your pet could talk, <laughs> he or she <laughs> would be able to tell us a whole lot of great things about you and a whole lot of things that your pet would wish you would improve. <laughs> so now, as I shared earlier, you know, I have a, four bonus tips I want to give because All of us have had experiences with passive aggressive people in the workplace, and it's very difficult to deal with. So let's get some tips. okay? number one, know that this person's passive aggressive behavior is not about us. You know, Sarah's behavior is not about joy and and Sunny is directed to them, but it's not about them. It's a dysfunctional way of handling their own emotions, okay? So this ain't your problem to solve. So if you'll look around, you'll be able to identify that there are other people on the job, in the house, at school, wherever this is, maybe with customers. They are also behaving the same way when they feel slighted or you know, angry or some emotion that they don't know how to deal with. They will fall back on this passive aggressive behavior. So it does help to remind yourself this really ain't about me. Okay, let's go to tip number two. Let's just say that it's gotten to a point where you can't ignore it anymore. Telling yourself it's not about you, which is true, but that doesn't help either. It just may be time for you to lovingly and in private uh, confront the person. I've had to do that many years ago. Just take them aside. I would recommend taking a neutral person with you to protect yourself. That way that person can't go spread rumors in the office and say, oh, she was so angry. She yelled at me. She cursed at me when you were very calm and never used one curse word. Bring someone that's neutral who can be a witness to the conversation uh, to protect you both. Okay. Um, the third tip is assess your own action. So for instance, if you do look around and you notice that you are like the only one, or if it were me, I'm like the only one on the job that they do this with, then it may mean that we have to assess our own behaviors. Uh, what are we doing that could be offending this person? Or what are we saying? Listen, that doesn't justify their passive aggressive behavior, but I'm just saying if we notice it's only with us and that means there's something we're doing uh, that maybe we can change that can alleviate uh, us having these Uh, unpleasant interactions with that individual. And finally, number four, avoid reciprocating their behavior, which is what joy does. It doesn't work. You know, it just escalates and it just makes the other people in the workplace uh, very, very uncomfortable. So one of the things I love about Sunny, so many things I love about her, but one of the things that uh, we've talked about over the years is how she even takes Whoopi's behavior. Sometimes when Whoopi slides her on the chin, she doesn't, she didn't say anything except that one time we talked about But when it comes to Sarah, notice that Macon Georgia's conversation. Notice how Sonny agreed with her. You know, I love that Bible scripture that says, agree with your adversary on the way. You know, agree with them because see, it dispels them and it makes people see their behavior. So when Sarah said both, Sonny said in in the sweetest voice tone, what did she say? Yes, both. (laughs) I thought, girl, if you need to write a book about how to be in the workplace. The last thing I want to say is I want us to go out listening to a clip of Sarah. You know, Sarah has been in therapy, she told us last week, for over 20 years. Before we uh, leave on this clip, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for listening, especially if you too, if you have passive aggressive behaviors that you're working on, this may have been very difficult for you to listen to. So thank you for being brave and staying with me to uh, this portion or point in our broadcast. So don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy hanging out and hey, consider subscribing to my YouTube community. So let's listen to Sarah as she talks about people who have their own issues in the workplace. And I'll talk to you in the next broadcast. Because there have been times where with help from my husband, my therapist, even my producer, I'll have to step back and say, okay, let's talk about that. Why are you feeling so, you know, hit by this? And it usually is your own stuff. It's your own baggage. It's your own journey. It was never about anyone else.